Welcome back, aliens. My name is Zarin Reddy, and let's continue with the series on NEO. So basically, till this point, we have talked about NEO blockchain, we have talked about the white paper, and now it's time to create our first smart contract. In fact, we have done that before. We have used the existing uh, smart contract, which your NEO provides. But now, we want to write our first contract from scratch. Of course, we'll not be doing anything difficult. We'll do an uh, easy part. In fact, we'll start with Hello World contract. We'll try to put some data. We'll try to retrieve some data and see how this works, right? Now, for that, you have what, you need to do, what you need to have in your system or maybe if you have following the entire uh, playlist, the first thing you need is a private blockchain. You can see we have a private blockchain here. Uh, if you don't have a private blockchain with you, you can just click on these three dots and they, it will show you option of creating a private blockchain. So make sure you do that. Of course, you can give any name, doesn't matter. The next thing you need is a wallet. In fact, we'll need two, two wallets just for the testing purpose. And you can see I have created two wallets here, Naveen and Kiran. If you don't know how to get a wallet, it's very simple. Right click and say create wallet. It will ask you for the name. Just mention the name and you will be having a wallet here. And as you can see, we have wallet. But then uh, Kiran already have 1000 gas coins. You will not be having it if you're doing it for the first time. So in that case, if you want these coins, you can ask the Genesis block, which already have a lot of coins with the, the Genesis block. You can just ask for the coins. How do we do that? So Genesis can transfer assets to you. Now assets can be coin, assets can be physical assets. I mean, you can convert a physical asset into a digital asset. So you can right click and you can say transfer asset. Uh, you can specify what you want to transfer. Let's say I want to transfer gas. I want to transfer another 400 gas coins from Genesis to Kiran. And you can do that. It's so simple. Right. After some time, when you refresh this example, let's wait for some time. And when you it, when it says it's completed, uh, transfer transaction submitted. Okay, it it, it will take around the 10, 15, 15, 20 seconds. And when you say refresh, you got your gas coins here. And that's it. Once you have this, you can write our first. We can write our first smart contract. Now, how do we do that? So in order to do in order, in order to write your first smart contract, you can just click on these three dots, and you can you can say create a contract. Now you have to select a language. It can be a C sharp language, it can be Java, it can be Python. Now since we uh, C sharp, we'll continue with that. So click on C sharp here, and so and you can mention a name here. So I will say first contract. Of course, you can give anything, but I will say first. I will say enter, and that's it. This is your first contract. It is takes it, it is taking some time to build, and I think it's done. Okay, but then we don't want to use this existing contract which is mentioned here, right? What we can do is we can build our own. So instead of using this one, I can just say select all and delete. We'll write this code by ourselves. Let's have this, this using statement before. Now, what is using? See, what happens is it, if you, it doesn't matter which language you work with. It can be uh, Java, it can be C Sharp, it can be Python, uh, C. Whenever we use some functions, now these functions or methods can be in inbuilt or these functions can be user-defined functions. Now, whenever you have inbuilt functions, which are programming language itself gives, that's a, that's very simple stuff. But if you are using some external libraries, you have to mention from which library you are using these methods. In this case, we are using C sharp, so we are using using, we are using using, pun intended. But uh, for Java, we use import, for C, we use include, right? And then we have to mention the library which you are working with. We are working with Neo here, and that is there. Okay, now once you specify the import packages, the next thing you need is, okay, uh, it's time to write a code, right? Now what exactly we are trying to do here? So we'll create a smart contract where you can put data, where you can fetch data. See, every time you put data, it will, it, it's a transaction, right? It will it will do some, some processing and it will do the transaction for you. So you have, to, you have to pay a gas fee. We also need a signature and we'll see how that signature works uh, behind the scene. Or not behind the scene, but in the code. So how do we write a C-sharp code? So in the C-sharp, the first thing you need to mention is the namespace where you are going to use this. And I will mention this namespace as first, not test, first. And there's one more thing, you know, when you explore these files, when you create a contract, it will it will give you some files. As an example, in the SRC, we got first contract, right? But then most of the development nowadays happens with the help of test-driven approach, where you also have a test packages. So in the test package, if you explore this first contract test, it will have some methods which will test your methods. But just to keep it simple, you know, for this example, which is not a good practice again, but just to keep it simple, since we are into learning phase, I will right click this and I will say delete. Okay, don't do that, but in the, in the real world, but since we are learning, we can do that. And the next thing is, since I'm deleting a folder itself, there is a 
directory or D, uh, DIRS or whatever. So there is this file, uh, project file, from which you have to mention that you don't have this. In fact, it says include, but then we don't have it, we'll, we'll delete that. So that it will not give you any error. Again, only for learning purpose, don't do it in production. Now, once we got our namespace, the next thing you need to do is you have to create a class. Now, that's how you do it in uh, Java or C Sharp, or maybe if you're using Python with classes or Python with oops. Uh, we use class, so we have to say public class. Now, why public is because it can be accessed from outside as well. And then you have to mention the name of a contract, which is first contract in this case. And that's it. It looks simple, right? But the problem is whenever you say, hey, you're creating a contract, it has some special meaning to it. It has some special features. And to get those features, you don't have to code it by yourself. You can use the existing class. And the class is smart contract. You can just use that class. It will have all the features of a smart contract in your class. And don't worry, this is not empty class. This, this is an inbuilt Neo uh, class or pre-built Neo class. And here you can find, there's no suggestion, but that's fine. It's a part of Neo package. Simple stuff, right? Now what we want here is we want to do a very simple code which where we can just add a data or we can add some data in the contract or in the blockchain. Now specifically when you talk about the contract, it uses now the difference between blockchain and a persistent store is in, in a blockchain when you have your data, it can be accessed from any contract. So let's say uh, in the network you have multiple projects and the multiple projects have multiple contracts. Anyone can access that data. But what if you want to have a, a data a storage where you can where only a particular contract can access? And that is done with the help of a persistent store. And we'll do that, we'll see how do we use a persistent store. So there's a special class called storage, and we can use it to store data. So basically, we can create variables as well. If you're coming from different languages like Java, C Sharp, C, uh, we use variables, right? Uh, in here, we call them as properties because it holds data. Now, these properties can be a property which can be changed, or we can have a constant values. Uh, when, you, when you want to use constant value, we can use const keyword, and that works. Otherwise, you can use normal properties. Now, one of the question is how exactly this data is getting stored in that store, which I, which I was talking about. So basically, it uses something called key and a value pair. So whenever you want to store the data, that's a value. It needs to have a key to access that. Of course, right? if you save something in a database or in a blockchain, how will you fetch it? You have to specify a key to it. Example, so I can say Navin Reddy. So what is Navin Reddy? It's a name, right? So name is a key here, and Navin Reddy is a value. So that's how you store data. And every data will have a type to it. Example, in programming language like, uh, like we have other languages where you mention the value and a type to it. Example, 5 is an integer, uh, Naveen is a string, A is a character. In the same way here as well, we have some properties or data types we can use. Okay, so we'll define those variables later, but as of now, I want to save some data, right? So what we can do is we can create a method. So that's how we do it. We create methods in, in C Sharp. So we'll say public static because I don't want to get object to call this. So I will say public static void because I don't want it, I don't want it written type. And I will say I will get a method called add data, not date, add data. That's it. Very simple stuff, right? Uh, you create a method and it should work. Now the only thing is you might want to pass a value. So let's say here I can just assign a simple value to it. But what if I want to pass a value while calling it this contract? So in this case, you can pass the object. It can be of any type. And uh, I can say object, I want to send the data. So whatever data I send here will be assigned to the store which you're talking about. But again, I'm just keeping that optional. You can just skip that part. You can just save any data you want. So where exactly you want to store this data? So I can say uh, storage, there's an inbuilt class called storage dot put. Now put is a method which you're calling. Now this put says, okay, my job is I will assign the value. But you have to provide me three things. The first thing you have to mention is the current context. Now, why, why, why do we need a context? See, whenever you work with a particular smart contract, this data will, is only available for that particular smart contract. But what if a smart contract is calling another smart contract, which is possible, uh, and that smart contract can call another smart contract, we can have a chain of smart contracts calling each other. And whenever you have multiple smart contracts calling each other, maybe sometime you want to pass the data as well. And as I mentioned before, when you talk about persistent store, it is only available for that particular smart contract. So if a smart contracts want to share the data with other smart contract, they can send this context as well. Uh, we can call them as a, as a store context. So here, if you want to mention that it's a, it's a current context, so you can say storage dot current 
context okay that's the first parameter the next two parameters are very simple the first parameter the second parameter is actually the key which you want to specify so i can say name that's the key and the value which i want to send here is naveen that's it so i have a key naveen name and the data is naveen it's that simple so that's my saving that's that's what i'm doing for to store data how about fetching this data it's very simple you say public static uh, since we are fetching data so we can say string and i can say get data and in this bracket you don't have to mention anything bracket because you're fetching data this time and open close now how do we fetch data now first of all we are fetching data so we can say return because we are returning value now from where do you want to return this value from storage right from the store so i will say storage dot any guess what the method name can be that's right it is get in bracket again you have to specify two things now any guess what those two things are the first is the from where you want to fetch it the context right so the context is storage dot current context and the next thing you have to mention is see in your store you'll be having multiple values and to fetch one value you have to specify a key to it and the key i want to fetch here is name and if you specify some other key it will not work now this looks very simple right and it is actually very simple let's run this and let's see if this works so what are the steps you have to follow to run this code uh, so the first thing you will do is you will just click on this terminal and you can say run build task and you can mention your code uh, we are working with first that's that's the name of your contract click on first and build done is it done okay so it is building you can see that in the bottom and done build is done there's no problem and i love when when we don't have any errors but yeah let's go to entry and now it's time to deploy this uh, project there so right click here and say where do we have deploy so you can see we have a deploy contract to new express do that now whenever you deploy stuff it will ask you for your account from where you want to deploy this and i will say i want to deploy it from naveen and what's the contract name it is your first contract.nef click on that and then it will take some time for for the deployment and of course it's also a transaction so there will be a deduction of a transaction fee and it will take uh, some time for uh, for the com for the completion and it looks like it is deployed completely done yeah so once it is deployed you can just right click and now it's time to invoke the contract now when you do that you can see we have so many options here and then we have seen this before as well right but then the focus is on our contract which we have built which is the first contract i can say get but don't you think we will not be having any data with name so first we'll add it so click on add so that's the contract name the operation we are trying to achieve is add data click on that and here you have to pass the data of course whatever you pass will not make any sense because we are not using it but just for fun i will let me just pass the data and once you have passed it click on run this step of course you can click on the debug as well but let me click on run this step now when you say run again it's a transaction right who will pay it who will sign it so we'll say okay navin will do it now this is important now this is something which was introduced in neo 3 but specifically 3.1 because see there are some issues when we talk about contract remember when when i mentioned about a contract can call a contract and that contract can call another contract now when you have this chain of contract it is possible that the contract which you have built is solid i mean there is no bugs to it or it's not malicious but what if you are by mistake you are calling a contract which is malicious or uh, maybe it was good initially but now it is malicious and what happens is whenever you call a contract you sign it right you have to provide a sign and that's what we have done before the problem is you are signing only for that particular contract not the subsequent contracts now what what will be the issue the issue would be you just want to transfer 10 neos to to your friend and you're doing that with a with a contract which you built but what if that contract is calling a malicious contract which says hey i got a signature and using that signature i can do whatever i want so they can get a hold on your wallet in fact it's not specific to neo with every blockchain we have something common if you own an asset and if you are signing it that means only you can do it how do we control this because for a transaction we sign it right we don't mention which token belongs to which person right and that's why we use public key infrastructure where we have a private key concept 
Here as well, it goes a step ahead by saying, even if you call multiple contracts and one of the contract is malicious, and that malicious contract is trying to work with your asset, you can deny it. And that's why we got a witness scope. So witness scope says, we have three options. In fact, we should get more options here. When you say none, it means it can, cannot call any of it, any of the contract. And it's not that useful. It has a very different purpose. Let's focus on this too. When you say global, it means you are signing for all the smart contract. So even if you have a malicious a smart contract in your code, uh, they can access whatever they want, right? Uh, they can transfer uh, tokens, it's not safe. So basically don't use global, it's not safe. Always use called by entry because you're mentioning only this particular contract can use this signature. So select this one and it will take some time for the transaction to get complete. And you can see there's a pending state here. Just wait to get it completed and done. You can see we got confirmed. Click on this one. I hope they, there was not any error. Everything looks cool. We are, so this is the sender, Naveen. This is a data which we are passing, but ultimately this data will not be used. You know why? It's because we are getting this data, but we are not using it. Of course, you can replace this Naveen with data and that should work. But as of now, we are not doing it. And everything looks good. It is not returning anything. That's why it says result null. But the fun thing will be when you try to fetch this data and let's see what happens when you fetch this data. So I can click on this get data. So I will not be using add data now. I will be saying get data. And I don't have anything here, delete this. So basically get data is not having any parameter. And now with this get data, say so click on this, run this step. Again, same thing, you can mention which account. I can say, let's try with Naveen itself. Naveen called by entry and Again, you will see a transaction here in pending state. So again, you can wait for 15, 20 seconds and it will be up and you can see it is confirmed. Click on this one and you can see the same stuff, but important is the result. Can you see that result is Naveen? Because that's what we have stored, right? Uh, so we were trying to fetch name. It should be same somewhere here. We are trying to fetch get data. Oh, the method name is get data, right? Not name. So when you say get data, it will give you data and the data, I mean, in the code itself, we are mentioning what you want. In fact, you know, you can be very specific. When you call get data, you can actually pass parameter. That will be your assignment, okay? Pass the parameter and get the data from here by mentioning the key. That's one. But then this contract is still not secure. And second, maybe if you want to delete this, uh, destroy the contract, we should be able to do that. So in the next video, we'll try to add some restrictions and uh, we'll also try to destroy the smart contract. So yeah, that's it from this video. I hope you enjoyed where we write, we, we, where we have written our first smart contract. Just to reiterate, it's a very simple smart contract. You just have to extend a smart contract. We are adding data with the help of put and we are fetching data. So this is a storage where you're trying to put data. Uh, we can also use storage map where we use as key value pair of multiple values. And even that works. So yeah, that's it from this video. I hope you enjoyed. Let me in the comment section and do something for the videos. Bye-bye.